these tortillas. Oh my god. Let's go! Hey there! Today I'm taking you to one of the most breathtaking destinations in Guatemala, Lake Atitla. Get ready for a colorful adventure as we explore the best towns, find the perfect accommodations, and discover all the unique hidden gems that this lake has to offer. Let's get right into it! Lake Atitlan is surrounded by three majestic volcanoes and offers stunning vistas at every turn. The Mayan tribes used to believe that Lake Atitlan was the belly button to the entire earth. There are 12 picturesque Mayan villages surrounding the lake and each town has its own unique vibe and cultural treasures. So one of my absolute favorite things here at Free Cerveza is just like the slow, quiet mornings, coming down to the dock, going for a morning swim. It's a bit chilly in the morning, but it's so amazing, so worth it, especially with the sunrise. Time to go jump in. Definitely recommend taking one of the SUPs early in the morning at 7 a.m. coming out into the middle of the lake. I mean, obviously I'm not in the middle of the lake, but it's so calm and peaceful out here. And the morning sun, oh, kissing your skin, mm, so nice. We're gonna go do some paragliding and we're doing cliff jumping in San Marcos. Let's go! Let's go! Okay, that was an absolute blast. Gotta go again, but I don't want to. <laughs> Here goes nothing. If you don't feel like doing the big jump, there is a smaller jump. We're gonna go check it out right now. Oh, being here at this nature reserve is so amazing. The water feels amazing jumping in or just getting in. You don't have to do the big jump, but I will say if you are gonna do the big jump, make sure you have experience with cliff jumping and make sure you know how to like position your body when you land. So far I've seen two girls now jump and they like kick their feet out and then they're landing on their butts and their backs. They're getting welts, like bruises, like it's bad. So, if you're gonna do it, make sure it's not your first time doing like pretty intense cliff jumping. But if you don't wanna do the cliff jumping, no worries. Come chill. There's so many like different little quiet hideaway spots and like you can tuck yourself into some shade, find some rocks, lay out on. It's really nice here. I'm really enjoying it. know what to expect when I was coming here but there are so many trails that go all over this hillside here and so many little like lookout spots with benches it's really enjoyable So it does cost 20 quetzales to be able to enter into the reserve, but it's well worth it. Um, they do an incredible job keeping the trails nice and maintained. The platform for jumping off of is really nice. There's no trash. 
Um, 10 out of 10, definitely recommend coming here. All right, so when you first get to San Marcos, when you get off the boat, you're gonna just walk up the main street and your very first left. So your very first left, you're gonna take that and then it's honestly kind of a maze, like wandering in and out of different alleyways. So I recommend if you have data and service, um, I would definitely pull up Google Maps and you just kind of keep walking on the trail or just keep following the main trail and don't take any like massive turns off of it. Uh, and you should be able to get there. There is a dock, so maybe you can take one of the launches there, but I'm not totally sure. Alrighty, but we are gonna head back into San Marcos. This town is definitely a hippie town and you can have a fun time here on certain substances. Um, it's also just a very laid back. You see a lot of different vendors selling their jewelry and just everyone's kind of chill and send out. And something I love is there's a lot of really healthy restaurants. One of the most popular things to do here is go to a yoga retreat or just do a drop-in yoga class. Yoga is very big in San Marcos. Okay, so sad news. I found out that the air pressures aren't that great today, so paragliding can't happen, which I'm really bummed out about, and it is my last day here, so I don't get to go paragliding, but highly recommend you do some research, figure out a good company to go with. Um, here are a couple of them that I recommend, but again, I didn't get to go with them, but I do recommend that they took safety into consideration and didn't force it to happen. When you first get here, right outside of Circles Cafe and Bakery, there's a big billboard with a bunch of different signs and posters telling you what is going on on that day. Recommend go check it out and then kind of plan your time in San Marcos. Oh my goodness, San Marcos has this gorgeous Central Park. It is so beautiful here. I had so much fun here in San Marcos. I definitely would recommend if you're not doing like yoga treat, you're not really big into like the hippie vibe, just come do a day trip here. It's not a super big town. You can see and do it all in one day. Um, but if you're interested in doing any yoga or spiritual work, I would come here. There's programs for like a month, two months, however long you want. It's a really cool little town. We're gonna go explore some of the surrounding towns around the lake. Let's get right into it. So getting around the lake is super easy here. There's these launches at every single town. There's going to be a dock. As I was saying, every town's going to have its own little dock and you just go down there. street art and some pretty impressive murals that kind of tell the history of the local Mayan tribes and the different cultures. It's really quite impressive. So just four or five blocks away from the main touristy area is going to be a bee sanctuary and it's called Mundo Abejas de Maya I think um, and there you can see the bees, you can learn about the bees, you can learn about the ancient Mayan practices with the bees. So we're gonna go check it out right now. So here we can see uh, how the European bees and also honey, okay. right? Because when there are not enough flowers around, they eat their own honey. And there are many guardians, mm -hmm. right? This bee uh, has a ceremonial use, it was used. So when you're here, you can do a tour for only 25 quetzales, which is like five US dollars. You can learn about all the different types of bees. I guess there's 400 different types of bees. Um, here in Guatemala though, there's only 32 different types. And then at the end of the tour, you get to try a bunch of different products. Now we're gonna try some of the honey from the bees right here. Oh wow. It's really sweet and like smooth though. Yeah, and not, um, it's more liquidy than most honey. Mm -hmm. I feel like, yeah, mm -hmm. okay know this but honey never goes bad it'll just like crystallize and it kind of changes its viscosity based off of the temperature it's in I really enjoyed the crystalline one it's not like typical honey that you get back home though where when it's crystallized it's kind of all icky it's still very nice and smooth so I just found out that there's a thing called black honey we're gonna try it now oh that's really interesting that's so different I didn't taste like 
I don't know what it tastes like, but not honey. <laughs> it's not bad though, it's really good. So I didn't know that you could eat pollen. So we're gonna give it a shot now. Oh, that's not how I thought it'd be at all. Oh, that's really sweet. That's really good. Huh. Learn something new every day. Also, another really interesting thing here at the lake is that each different area speaks a different Mayan language. And so there are a lot of different tribes and communities that they cannot converse with each other because they speak a different language. A lot of them do speak Spanish though, and that's kind of their common language. But I thought that was a really interesting fact that I learned. So while it is a very, very steep hill, it's definitely worth it because you can make a lot of stops grab some souvenirs, hop in and out of some restaurants, grab a drink, grab some ice cream, or just grab like a michelada while you're hiking up it. Honestly, that kind of sounds awful though. So we just got over to San Pedro. It's right next to San Juan. It's way bigger though and way more touristy. Figure out which one I like more, San Juan or San Pedro. It did only cost me 10 quetzales to get over here with the tuk-tuk. You can take the lanchas, but that's gonna cost you 25 quetzales. Central Park here in San Pedro is a great place to come hang out, grab some fruit from some of the vendors, or just chill in the shade. Right here is also going to be the Catholic Church of San Pedro. It's this gorgeous, it's blinding me right now, it's this gorgeous white bright building right here in the center of the cathedral. Definitely worth checking out. So right here in San Pedro, there is a museum and it's gonna show you all about the Mayan history, the history about the volcanoes here, about the lake, um, photographs from back in time, any archeological stuff. It's got a ton of information here. I was really excited to check it out, but unfortunately it is closed right now because there's a big group in there that's like they've reserved it. But the name of it, Tanun, yeah, yeah, I think. Something like that, but it's definitely worth checking out. But unfortunately, today's my only day in San Pedro, so I can't come back and check it out. But I highly recommend you do. So my personal opinion is that if you just have one day and you're just coming to either San Juan or San Pedro to explore, I recommend you do San Juan if it's just a day trip. I think San Pedro would be more fun if you're staying here, you have more time, you go out partying at night. But San Juan has more to offer if you're just like wanting to wander around the streets and like check out different artwork and hop in and out of different restaurants and souvenir shops. Just like that, I am back in Panahachel, or as the locals call it, Pana. Uh, took the lancha back over here. Normally the launches are pretty quick, but today the launches I was on were not filling up fast and so they were taking forever. Um, also, right now I'm walking on one of the main touristy streets in Panahachel and it is empty. I was here on a Sunday and it was packed. So I definitely think all the towns come alive on the weekends here at Lake Atitlan. So one thing that I love about Panahachel is their boardwalk. It goes on pretty far, but I think what I think is really unique about it is it like goes up and down through some trees, through some parks, through different vendors. Um, and if you keep kind of going away from the main street, you kind of find a more local area. And so I got some like fried plantain with some cream sauce and some sugar uh, for seven quetzales. They also do elotes and a bunch of other micheladas and other drink stands all around and just then the typical souvenir shops but it's also a beautiful view 
on the boardwalk and then there's a bunch of benches so you can sit down and enjoy the view. And I think we might have a decent sunset tonight even though I am here during rainy season. And if you don't feel like going into a restaurant, there's a bunch of different food vendors on the side of the street here and I just got myself a tostada for four quetzales. If you want really good ice cream, I highly recommend you go to Dulce Gelato. They also have one in San Juan. And I recommend you get the mango cheesecake ice cream. Oh my God, it's so good. If you're at the lake on a Thursday or a Sunday, I highly recommend you take a day trip to Chichicastenango. It has Central America's largest market. It's so colorful. And honestly, it's my favorite market I've ever been to in the entire world. Definitely has a local feel to it. There are obviously tourists, but it's not an insane amount of tourists, like a lot of the markets that you'll find in other countries. So at the center of all of the markets, it's gonna be the Plaza y Mercado, and it's two stories. And you come up to the top and you can look down then, and it's all the fruit and produce and like vegetable vendors selling all of their stuff. So you might read some things saying like, don't go to the cemetery alone, it's not safe, but like, it's just a bunch of families there like going to their loved one's grave. So definitely very safe. I mean, maybe not at night, but I have no idea, but I felt so safe walking around the market all the time. People do recommend put your backpacks on your front. Um, I would recommend that. I've been keeping on my back though, but just like being super extra vigilant about it. Um, but so far, loving it here. So I definitely highly recommend you eat in the market. There's a bunch of different restaurants. Not really restaurants, just little stands. But that's where you're gonna find the best and the cheapest food. These tortillas, oh my gosh. They're so good. And I don't know the price, but it's definitely gonna be cheap. It's where all the locals are eating at. Definitely have to come check it out when you're here at the market. Normally I'm pretty good with directions, but I am so lost right now and so turned around backwards because this place is so massive. Always something to remember, negotiate, start around like 50% of what they first offer and then maybe settle around like 60% of the original price. Also, if everyone's staring, also, if at one point you don't like their price, go to another place because there are so many vendors selling all of the same things. And so you can definitely get somebody down to the price you're looking for. But remember, don't be disrespectful. If you want a hippie scene, head to San Marcos. If you want a party scene, head to San Pedro. If you want a relaxing, quiet getaway, head to High Balito. But if you want all of these, I highly recommend you check out Free Cerveza in Santa Cruz. Overall, I really think that this hotel gives you absolutely everything you could need to make sure you have the perfect time here at Lake Atitlan. All right, that's Lake Atitlan for you. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss next week's video.